Hey there students! I'm going to talk to you a bit today about the Virginia colony and specifically as it relates to the birth of the British Empire and really gets the whole thing started in British North America. It's an old 19th century saying, the sun never sets on the British Empire. Now if we're going to go back to the 16th century, the 1500s, someone might have asked, what empire? You know, kind of like those super hot fire videos, you know, I'm going to end this man's whole career. What career? You know, that sort of thing. It's like, I mean, what empire? Before the Virginia colony, the English were nothing. The British, nothing. I mean, they weren't even technically British at that point because the Act of Union hadn't even quite gone through. So, you know, really, as far as what we think of as Britain being an imperial power, in the early 17th century, late 16th century, that was not the case. And it was actually the Spanish who were the first to set up a permanent settlement in the present-day United States. That is at St. Augustine, Florida, where the Spanish settled in 1565. And Sir Walter Raleigh, who was an English gentleman, he was thinking, hey, how can we do the same thing, all right? Raleigh was an explorer. He was someone who was very passionate about a colony. And, you know, he thought, okay, well, I want to get this started. And you know what? Why don't we call the colony Virginia? Now, this was after Queen Elizabeth I, who was known as the Virgin Queen. Well, the first effort at making a colony in Virginia was a failure. This was the lost colony at Roanoke that the English put a colony on this island that's off the coast of present-day North Carolina, and then they just left it there for about three years. And this is about the same time as the defeat of the Spanish Armada, if you've taken European history. And this is where, you know, the English really are not able to check on their colony because they are so busy at war with Spain. And so when they finally do get around to checking on the colony, they find nothing except for the word Croatan etched into one of the trees. And that's really, there are all kinds of theories about what happened to this lost colony, but at the end of the day, we don't really even know. It's a good time to shout out to Seren and her AP US history class in Chicago, Mr. MacArthur. Thanks for using my stuff. So Queen Elizabeth died in 1603 and was replaced by James I. Now, yes, we are talking about the same guy who gave us the King James Bible. And then in 1604, the English and the Spanish got together and they made peace. So the English are now freed up for another colonial venture. And in 1606, the Virginia Company is founded, which was a joint stock company founded to create profitable settlements in North America. Remember, the point of a colony is to make money. And so let's go into quickly the three types of colonies because this is something that everybody needs to understand. There are crown colonies, joint stock colonies, and proprietary colonies. A crown colony being a royal colony, we would also know this as, and this is where, well, the crown governs this colony directly. A joint stock colony, also known as a corporate or a charter colony, this is when the king gives a charter to a corporation which is operating the colony in hopes of making a profit. And then finally, the proprietary colony, where the proprietor basically owns the colony. This is kind of like the king who owns all the land in the colonies in order to discharge a debt or maybe as a friend or something like that. And he gives this colony, this land, as a gift to the proprietor who has the right to administer that land as he sees fit. And so the Virginia colony is located on the Chesapeake Bay. And the Chesapeake colonies, these are Virginia and Maryland, and they're called this because of their location. And also, as far as what ends up happening on these colonies, as far as the soil, when we think about in a bit, we'll talk about the cultivation of tobacco and that sort of thing. So really what we might refer to as the Upper South later in U.S. history, but when we think about Chesapeake colonies, we're thinking specifically Virginia and Maryland. 
So this paves the way for the Jamestown settlement, which was established in Virginia in 1607, and this was the first permanent English settlement in the present-day United States. Now, a lot of times I give you dates for reference. 1607 is one of those dates that you should know because this is when the English, later the British, are officially in the business of colonizing. So I would say that go ahead and note that date, 1607, and also Captain John Smith, who was one of the most important settlers in the colony. In fact, when he got there, he was actually in chains for something that had happened on the way there or something like that. But he ends up becoming a very important leader because the Jamestown colonists had a lot of struggles early on. One of these being with the local Powhatan Indians. A lot of times we think about the Indians as victims of white European settlement. But at this time, these Jamestown colonists were pretty much helpless. John Smith related a story of how he was captured by the Powhatan Indians, he was about to be executed, and Pocahontas saved him. Now, whether this was a mock execution or something like that, it was some sort of ceremony that he didn't even understand. There are some historians that actually speculate that maybe this account did not even happen as Smith related it. But the Powhatan Indians were the power in the region, and the Jamestown colonists originally were very reliant on them for food and supplies, but the relationship was not always friendly, and we'll return to that later. Now, John Smith saved the colony partly because he comes in here, there were a lot of people who thought that they were going to look for gold, and a lot of gentlemen who thought that they were too good to work. And John Smith said, hey, I got news for you, all right? doesn't look like there's any gold here. The Virginia Company wanted gold. They were th hey, you know, the Spanish found gold. You should find gold too in the New World. And John Smith said, nope, we're going to have to grow crops and we're going to have to eat food and stay alive and that sort of thing. And that kind of foreshadows what the English colonists are really going to be doing more than anything, that they're not going to be looking for gold later on. They're going to be farming. They're going to be growing cash crops in the south, staple crops in the north. But John Smith says, look, if you don't work, you don't eat, you're not just going to sit there and look for gold that's not there. And John Smith left the colony right before the starving time of the winter of 1609 and 1610, where there were over 200 colonists before this winter, but after this winter, only 60 survived, and I was reading some very interesting stuff, if you want to call it that, that there is some legitimate archaeological evidence that the Jamestown colonists during this winter resorted to cannibalism, which, you know, you think, all right, choice between dying and eating people, right? I mean, we all saw what happened to Bob, right? Actually, we didn't all see that. If you don't watch The Walking Dead, then you should. All right, but anyway, moving on. Now, there was a type of gold in the colony. It just wasn't what people thought that it would be. John Rolfe, uh, who was actually the guy that ended up marrying Pocahontas. You know, we hear all these little tales about John Smith and Pocahontas, but it's actually John Rolfe who married her. We can see here a 19th century painting of the baptism of Pocahontas. But John Rolfe was an important person here because he discovered the gold that was there, which was brown gold, okay, that John Rolfe cultivated a sweeter strain of tobacco that became popular in England. And when John Rolfe cultivated this, they call it brown gold because when you cure tobacco, when you dry it and remove its chlorophyll content and all of that kind of stuff, it turns brown. But before tobacco turns brown, it's green just like money. And tobacco becomes the primary cash crop of the Chesapeake colonies. This land is very suited for growing tobacco. And you know this is going to turn the Virginia colony from something that was a failure to something that is a huge commercial success, partly because of, well, Sir Walter Raleigh and others who popularized tobacco in Europe. And so smoking tobacco becomes a pastime. Sir Walter Raleigh, before he was executed in 1618, he had a pouch that he left in the Tower of London, and somebody found the pouch after his death, and it said in fancy Latin, it was my companion at that most miserable time. 
that he was locked up in the Tower of London with nothing to do, at least he could smoke. That would be kind of funny, but smoking cigarettes is bad for you, and it could kill you. Don't smoke cigarettes.